So I've been trying to implement the physics for Celestium, which of course are going to be uh, very important because this game is going to be set in space. And um, I aim to have like full, uh, you know, at least uh, I guess uh, pseudo Newtonian physics. So like when you're flying a spaceship, it'll follow like orbital properties um, and like uh, momentum and velocity and delta v and, and all that stuff. Now I was having a little bit of trouble with this. You see, Godot has a built-in system wherein using uh, area nodes, you can actually make a gravity point in which everything in that area will gravitate towards the center, much like a planet's gravitational field. Problem is I wasn't able to figure out how to get the areas to mimic real life gravity. Um, and for some reason, it, there wasn't, I, I couldn't find a lot of documentation on this. I don't know if that's my fault, but yeah, I decided to go with a different method. Now I thought I would try um, having the gravity be coded instead of just using Godot's built-in nodes. The problem is you can't edit the position of a rigid body um, continuously or else it'll completely uh, mess up the physics system. And obviously, constantly changing the position of objects is what, uh, is, you know, it's, that's what gravity does. So I decided to try it with kinematic bodies, which is what you'll see in this first clip here. Um, you can see it's, it's pretty laggy. Um, and when they bump into each other, the, uh, it looks very strange. This is not at all how uh, gravity behaves in the real world. It looks v very janky. So then I decided to try and change it so that um, they their velocity becomes zero when they collide with each other. I, I don't remember why I tried this. It obviously doesn't work. And it became obvious pretty early on that I would need to use rigid bodies. And so I realized I could just use the add central force function that rigid bodies have instead of modifying their position through code and that should work just fine and indeed when I tried it out it did um, you can see it's still a little bit laggy and also um, it sort of starts spinning I guess this is because the physics just aren't that precise enough and it sort of turns it into this sort of perpetual motion machine until it just explodes and flies apart. I'm not really sure. So then I tried it with a bunch more nodes, because obviously we're going to need a ton of these if we're going to make it like a big planet. And you can see it was really laggy. So then I just switched the function that did the gravity from the physics process to the process function. And that sped it up somewhat. And so then I tried adding a bunch more nodes. And you can see it got laggy again. So then to try and make something that looked vaguely like a planet, I decided to increase the size of the mesh so that it was bigger than the collision shape so that the, the nodes would all intersect with each other. And I also made them green, like the color of grass. So you can see when they come together, they form something that almost sort of starts to resemble a planet. But, um, yeah, I think due to the limitations of um, of how fast a computer can run, having each planet be a huge collection of physically bound f physics objects is uh, just not really going to work processing-wise. But hey, although that tangent sort of went nowhere, um, what it did do was finally teach me how to do the physics properly. And now, as you can see, we have Newtonian physics in this game. For a long time, I expected I would just be doing planetary orbits via um, just, just having the planets be rotated manually by nodes. But yeah, I, I, you know, I decided to, uh, to go all in. And here we are, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this result. So, um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. It really helps out the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.